Good morning and welcome to my makeshift inside workshop that I just kind of put together with my cameras and lights and things. Now what I've got on my table here this morning is this Sato FA90TS engine that I featured in a couple of videos. And I think I can recall the story well enough to tell you a little bit about the history of this engine. So I purchased this off of eBay for a very reasonable price. Uh, because it was being sold by the widow of the owner. or the, So the, the woman that was selling this, her ex-husband, died very suddenly and tragically in a car accident, apparently. I don't know if he was hit by a car or what, but that's the story she told me. So I don't really know that she really knew what she had here. The story I got from her, which I don't know that I believe anymore, was that this was uh, new in box and he had had it for years and it had been on a display in um, a hobby store. According to her, it had never been run, but uh, when I first got this and looked at it, it was very easy for me to determine that it had been run, so it wasn't new in box, and it didn't even come with all of the accessories. It came with the box, it didn't even come with the exhaust. Fortunately, a real good friend of mine in Florida, Harvey, had an exhaust, or the flex exhaust for this, and he sent them to me free of charge, and of course, you've seen those exhausts on the run videos. Now, the reason I've got this on the bench now is because I'm going to take a quick look inside and what I, I'm just really intending to remove this rear cover. And the reason I want to do this is because during one of those uh, runs on the bench, this screw vibrated loose and was lost. And I didn't realize that until I saw that this screw was vibrating out and was in jeopardy of being lost. Um, so that just seems really unusual to me that an engine from Sato would have screws that vibrated loose. <sighs> so with that said, there was another reason I was going to look inside this also, and that was because Harvey noticed and I noticed also that when I was running this with a 14.6 prop, the engine seemed to run okay, but just to me it didn't seem like it was spooling up all the way and I think Harvey noted that it didn't either sound right or it didn't sound like it was making uh, max RPM for that given prop, even though it was still a new engine. So I tend to believe more what Harvey tells me because he has a lot more experience with these twin cylinder Sados than I do. So for me to actually get this rear cover off, I'm gonna remove these engine mounts. And I can tell that they were never removed before because they were extremely tight. So it just is, it's an odd to me that screws would vibrate loose for no reason. So I don't know if somebody actually had just taken this off to look at it or something or what. I don't know. But I am going to, like I said, remove that rear cover and look in there and at least check the timing because um, Harvey is of the impression that Perhaps the timing isn't right. And that again would be incredibly unusual for a new inbox Sato engine to not be timed right. Now when I, you may say, well, how are you gonna verify the timing? Well, luckily these instructions, these are later instructions from, uh, I think they're from Sato's site and, and then Hobby, Horizon Hobby was sending them. Many of you will recognize this. But in these instructions, uh, the la one of the last pages actually shows how to time the engine, so I'm going to be referring to that as far as uh, timing of the engine. So we're going to remove these two carb screws here. Now those, <coughs> excuse me, those did not seem tight at all. So the kicker here also is that if for some reason the timing is off, 
I'm not prepared to correct it at all <laughs> because to retime this engine requires complete disassembly of the engine because this one shaft, the camshaft, has to be pulled out. And to pull that out, you have to have the heads off, the cam followers out, and probably, obviously, maybe not obviously, you may not have to have the bearings out, but you definitely need to have the heads pulled and be able to pull those camshafts out, or the tappets out. Um, so I did have to go to my local Horizon, or local Horizon, local, <clears throat> excuse me, local hobby store and buy some new screws because I was not able to find the one that had vibrated out and I wasn't sure if it came out. That one was really loose because I put it back in myself. That didn't feel super tight. That didn't feel super tight. Um, I ran this engine in my garage and then out at the field. So if I didn't notice, either I didn't notice that screw was missing to begin with or it came out during one of those things. I searched in my garage and I couldn't find a screw in there and my garage floor is very clean. Um, it seems more likely that it may have come out at the field or it wasn't there to begin with and I just never noticed it. So you'll notice that I'm taking these screws out and you can't see them where I've got them positioned here. Move it up a little bit here more. I'm taking these screws out into position like this so that I know because they're different lengths. So they're kind of going to be in. So, oops. So here's the inside cover. Looks pristine. That gasket looks pristine. So that's a good thing. The engine, I don't have a paper towel with me or do I? Let me turn around here real quick. I think I've got a towel back here. So this engine, from what I'm seeing now, looks extremely pristine. Now I'm probably going to have to get my head in here at some point to figure out So this Hmm I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not The timing mark is right here in this orientation right now It's supposed to be Set to be here. There's two dots. I don't know if you're going to be able to see those or not. There's two indentations on here. On these instructions, it's only showing one, but there's clearly two indentations there. And, all right, so this is interesting. So it looks like it's timed pro properly to me. I don't think you're gonna be able to see this, unfortunately, because of the, the lighting I've got here. I've got really good lighting, but I just don't know if you're gonna be able to see this level of detail. So according to these instructions, number one says, there'll be a mark on this gear that should line up with this. There's a mark on this portion of the case too. And then it says here, locate the crankshaft and crankcase alignment marks, arrow. So I've got them located there. And then it says, make sure Tappet has not entered camshaft area. That's for installing, obviously. Locate the cam gear reference mark and align with the crankcase arrow. So like I just said, what I'm seeing on my crankcase is there's two dots here. And it almost kind of looks like that dot on the camshaft is supposed to be in between there. Because as I am looking at this right now, 
I know you can't see this. The mark on this gear here is aligned with this screw hole, which just so happens to be where the dimple is. And the dot on this timing gear, or the camshaft, is right directly in between both of these, which makes more sense, I guess. I mean, it could mean that this could potentially be out by one tooth either way, which would be enough to cause some issues. Um, let's just, I'm going to pull the glow plugs out of here. And we'll rotate this crankshaft around several times and see. I'll see. You're not going to be able to see. So I'm rotating, 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 and nowhere in these instructions, and it's it's pretty much those of you that have timed these gears, it doesn't matter about top dead center on either cylinder. Let me read exactly what this says here. Um, assemble, okay, fit, first unscrew the lock, okay. Position a piston rod, rocker arm pins, push rod taps, etc. in their original position. Engine parts must be made of, when you re when you do assemble your engine, apply engine oil to each part. So it doesn't say anything about timing this engine where on a normal single cylinder four stroke you have to have, you know, uh, the piston in top dead center and then your alignment mark. This is not that way at all. All this is saying here, and I've done this on my 60T that I had at one time also, is just locate the crankshaft, crankcase alignment marks, as I already said in figure number one, or item number one there, make sure the tappet has not entered the camshaft area so that it doesn't interfere with the lobes on the camshaft. And then locate the cam gear reference mark and align the crankcase with the crankcase arrow. So it doesn't matter what position either piston is in. All that matters is that when this mark on here is lined up with that dot here, that this dot here more than likely falls in between these two dots. And I will do the best I can to see if I can get a picture taken of this so that is clear enough so that you can see this. They're pretty small, but that makes the most sense to me because every time I rotate this through and come to this alignment point, which is right here, this dot always falls right in between these two dots here. So that's telling me that, you know, we're in good shape there. Now, this is the screw that worked loose. I'm not entirely certain that there's any need for me to remove this screw and this screw and pull this any further. I'm not sure there's a reason for that at this point. Um, because I've verified the timing, I verified what I needed to see, and I don't believe this engine is mistimed now. So I think that's as far as I'm gonna go with this right now. And I'm just gonna say that uh, what I'll do with this is I'll put it back together now, and at some point in the near future, or sometime this summer at least, I'll get it back on the stand and we'll do some more runs. Maybe it's just that it needs to some more break-in time, or maybe I'll change to, I was running a 14.6 prop. Maybe I'll change to a 13.6. Let's see what other prop sizes it says are good for this engine. Let's see here, propeller 12.8 through 14.6 is all it says. Uh, there is one other thing I want to show you. And one of the tools I have here to disassemble this engine is a common coin. It's just a US nickel. And the reason I have that is because one of the camshaft bearings is located in this within this cover and this nickel is the perfect size 
to unscrew this cover. Now I had done this before and it looked like somebody else had already done it before too with a bladed screwdriver and dinged it. But if you unscrew this you can see one of the bearings in there and again I don't know if the light's gonna... Okay here you can see the bearing in there now. It's very nice pristine and I mean this engine really does look pristine. It was not new in box when I got it as I said because it was very obvious to me that it had been run. Uh, the glow plugs were darker and there was some exhaust residue in the exhaust ports. So it had been run at least one time, maybe two. Um, but I now after opening up this rear cover, I do not believe that this engine has been opened up and played with and I believe that it is timed correctly. So uh, we're just going to go with it as it is. I got these new screws. I'm going to put one in here, torque it down, and then the next subsequent runs make sure that it uh, doesn't work loose again and see what happens goes from there. So that's our video for today.